Hello and welcome to episode 5 of La Violette Yarn and Gift Co. Shopcast Knitting Podcast. My name is Manau. I am the current owner of La Violette Yarn and Gift Co. located on the beautiful east coast of Canada. So we are in New Brunswick and if you look across the ocean on my left we can see PEI. It's an absolutely beautiful place and very welcoming. So welcome to everyone. Welcome if you're a new viewer and you've never been here. I hope you enjoy it. And welcome to returning viewer. Your support is greatly appreciated. Um, thank you for the likes, the comments, the subscribing. It really helps a small business and a new channel to grow. So I really appreciate it. So this podcast, Knitting Shopcast, is primarily about tips and tricks I wish I knew. So grab your favorite drink and I will see you in a few minutes. Cheers. Welcome back. So thank you again for being here with me. I have um, my new favorite drink um, in my favorite cup. Mm. The other day, my friend Natasha came over to uh, do some knitting with me and she brought this amazing organic tea that is a burst of warming cinnamon, cardamom and ginger. and. If you've never tried it, I highly suggest it. It's very, very, very good and soothing. Thank you, Natasha. Now you've addicted me to something new and I like that. So today, the tip and tricks I wish I knew is about stripe knitting. This, I'm sure some of you have already recognized this beautiful, beautiful sweater. Um, the design is called Illuminate by Andrea Mari. And I'm just gonna stand so you can see a little bit more of the garment here and beautiful jugless stripes it's a gorgeous pattern so i've been wearing it over and over and over i just love it so this pattern is basically a fingering weight that i've done it with and um, two strands of mohair for the stripes so you can see the beautiful halo that is created and when I first saw the pattern, I'm not a fan of stripes. The stripes on the original pattern are a little bit wider. So because I like the actual color work at the top and design so much, I decided to give it a try and adjust the pattern for my liking. So the stripes repeat are four rows of each. So four rows of the double stranded mohair and four rows of the um, fingering weight. So what I like about Andrea Mari's pattern is she always gives, well, she tells you what she knits her garment with, but she has a list of yarn suggestion and the cost of it. So the Mano Celegria was one of the suggestion for the fingering, uh, the main color. And I had chosen a very beautiful blue that has, uh, it's hand dye, so it does have a little bit of variation, but it's a semi-solid. And it is 75% superwash merino and 25% polyamide. Lots of yardage, 405 meters. So it's absolutely stunning. One of my favorite yarn. I've done shawls with that yarn, um, many shawls. I've done two ranunculus. Yeah, I'm guilty of being a ranunculus addict as well. 
and this one here so really 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 like it i also changed let, let's talk about modification before i talk about jugless um striping the neck so when i look at pattern and i don't like anything in my neck i always think that you know what it's not because i don't like the neck of this pattern and i'm just gonna swipe and get to the next one i decided to do one and a half inch instead of the two and a half inch recommended um, ribbing here and it really really helped to achieve the look that i wanted and beside that the stripes i think it's it, it's all i've done for modification and i think the beginning of round is at the back so once i separate the yoke and the sleeve put the sleeve on hold i most of the time 99.9 .9, so i'm not sure my husband would say most of the time i change the beginning of round to under the arm so if there is a either like i'm changing color because of the hand dyed yarn or because it's tripey i will change it there so if it's a little visible most likely nobody will see it um that's a little bit of a, a trick that i've learned so another thing that i will tell you about this pattern a lot of people want to knit this pattern when they come in the store and they see me wearing it or they see it on display after i wash it and put it back there um when you do the increase she's very specific in let's say you knit three you increase one knit three increase one and then i had kind of lost my track and i thought well as long as i end up with let's say a number of 250 stitches i should be fine well in the big picture yes you'll be fine but if you have a little bit of ocd like i do you will notice that this pattern does not fall right square with this line here which i wish it would have been here and the bottom one is not center either so most people don't notice it and i don't usually tell now that you know you come in and say hey i can see it now but yeah it's really really bothered me i've noticed it when i once i separated the sleeve but i decide not to uh, not to rip it apart like it's just beautiful regardless and i love it so what is jugless striping oh my so if you knit flat you never have to worry about jugless because you knit flat um, but when you knit in a round so you continuously knitting around it's like a spiral because each well each time you get to your beginning of the run you go up and get to the beginning of the run go up again so if you don't do a little bit of a technique to avoid the step laddering of the change of colors you will see it so andrea mari with this uh, beautiful sweater she does have a um a tutorial and i'm gonna link it because right now i can't remember what it's called um it is jugless <laughs> by andrea mari so you basically if you change your color and another trick you should do every time you change your color is to twist your yarn so i usually grab the yarn from under and then i start knitting my first round and then when you get back to the first stitch of the second round before you knit that stitch you will lift the stitch below from the right leg and put it on the needle and knit the two stitches together and then continue and continue just in, until you have to do your next change of colors if you do that all, every single time you change color most likely you won't notice any difference lettering um jug step it would be fine also if you knit maybe five or six row you want to do your twisting of yarn maybe every second row just so that you don't have a big length of yarn doing nothing at the in between and um, keep your stitch a little bit tighter as well so i'm going to show you here i've knitted a sock actually i've needed two socks yeah not like me but um i recently went to uh, visit barocco head office in rhode island 
and they were so kind to send me some yarn. I'll show you what I got so that I can play with fibers and strings and here. This is a brand new yarn for this year. It's the Buraco Vintage Yarn. Same beautiful softness um, blend that all the Vintage Collection has. So it's the same blend, exact same yarn, but it's a fingering for socks. So it is gorgeous. It retails at $13. We don't have them yet in store, but it's coming. And uh, yeah, so they sent me those three. I said, oh, just send me some beautiful bright color. And um, I didn't really want to travel with three balls of yarn. So I decided to do the sock in two and put a little embroidery. So yeah. This is a fun pattern. It is called the Mare Socks. No, Mere Socks, M-E-E-R-S-O-X-X -X, with no space in between. And I'm gonna link that below as well. And uh, the short row heel, I really like. It fits my foot perfectly. I know not everybody's a fan, but it's really quick and I like the finished product of it. So I'll show you the actual um, striping here is my jug, I mean, my jug. It's where I changed the color. That's the side here. So you can see a little bit if you really look close, but I actually think I did a pretty good job here. Yeah, and if you look inside, I mean, not just putting on my, <laughs> my hands, but so you can see where I carry my yarn and twist it. So I did this one, I believe, with uh, three, row, three rows of each color, and then I switched it. And I did a twisted rib, same color as my toes, and the pink heel. I really like it. First time doing the embroidery, and I <laughs> had to take it off several times. It was a little challenging to get this, but it's fun. A lady asked me when I was knitting at the airport if I was making those for my daughter, and I'm like, maybe. <laughs> I just like bright colors, so yes, they're for me. Oh, sorry, I just hit the uh, the stand for the phone. So these are my socks, and let me have a sip of tea here. So I hope you've been well in the last couple of weeks. Um, I have so many things happening in my life right now, like so many things. I've taken in new project and I really thought I could handle my new yarn project that I'm doing on the side and managing the store and all that, but uh, I'm only human and I just, I realize I can't, I can't. So you might've seen a post going on Last week, um, today we are March 21st, and last week I've posted and I'm looking for someone to take over the store. I'm afraid I may regret it. I just, this is my happy place. Today the store's closed, but I'm here because where else am I gonna record this podcast anyway? <laughs> and I love it. I love, I love the people. I love yarn. I love to talk about yarn, about project and what, does people like to do yeah so let's go back to my illuminate now that I'm looking at my table and see what did I miss um, the illuminate sweater I've knitted it like I said with the Allegria and I did a swatch which I don't normally do a swatch so I couldn't decide if I was gonna do the stripes the mohair stripe with the darker well the medium blue here of the tin silk mohair or if I was going to do it with the light blue. It's gorgeous. I know. I like blue. Blues and green and gray. <laughs> I'm boring. <laughs> but I am getting a little bit better. So when I did my swatch, I first swatched with the very light and the blueberry Allegria. And was a little bit too light and then i swatched with the dark which was nice as well more settled and then i well with a suggestion of a client that was here when i was swatching she said why don't you do the light and the medium together 
one strand of each because if you're going to be doing two strands, why not? So that's what I did. And you can tell there's a little, little tiny bit of the emerald effect mold. Mold. <laughs> I like that. So that's what I choose. And I swatched and I was quite proud of myself for swatching. So yeah, I mean, you can do whatever. Like the blue is absolutely gorgeous, but I also love the green. This green is beautiful. Actually, I lost the tag, so I can tell you the name of that green, but I think that these two together will be absolutely stunning. As an illuminate sweater. Yeah, I like that. So what else am I working on? Um, I just cast on a new summer top and Sophie and I, Sophie and I are doing a make along. So this one is, um, I mean, if you're gonna be doing the knit along with us, I'm trying to decide if I wanna do a live cast on maybe for my second project, but um, I don't know, I'll talk to Sophie about it tonight. Tonight is our monthly knit together. Um, I call it Stitch and Brew. And uh, it's been two years since I've started the first Stitch and Brew. That was March 22nd, 2020 at the Kevok Brewery in Dieppe near Moncton. And it's been growing. We had to stop doing it during COVID. I mean, even the first time we had to wear masks when we met and we had like 17 people that came in together and now we have about 27 28 and it's growing there's a change every week some people can't make it but some new people are heading so we may have to look for a different space to host the uh, stitch and brew maybe we'll call it something else stitch and be something but anyway <laughs> Yeah, so I'll talk to Sophie tonight when I see her if she's uh, thinking that maybe a good idea to do a live um, cast on. She's she's almost done her first summer knit part of the make along, and uh, I'm not even there yet. But I don't, I wouldn't mind casting on another project. So the yarn I choose for my project is called Myrtle by Queensland. And I don't know if you can see this here, but this yarn is sustainable, compostable, vegan silk, spun from eucalyptus. So every time I say that to people, guess what they're doing? <laughs> it does not smell like eucalyptus. I wish it does. Can you imagine like walking with being fragrant and eucalyptus leaves? It will be pretty amazing, but it is the softest, softest yarn it is called vegan silk and it really does well to the name so we only have three colors right now just because i wanted to try it and i don't really know how the garment is going to drape if it's going to grow tremendously but i love the sick silkness of it and the stitch and it's actually a i know i should put my glasses in i find when i wear my glasses if i'm recording I can see like harm length and I'm having a hard time seeing what's happening on the screen. Why well, should we bother about what's happening on the screen? You guys are seeing it, not me. But um, yeah, I do wear um, progressive glasses. <laughs> so this one is a number four. So it's more like a Aaron weight. Beautiful. So I'm going to show you the little top I stirred it and it's called Mare by Hannah Messageska. I will definitely link that because I'm probably mispronouncing the name and um, it's a fun construction. Here we go. Let me just show you this. A drop stitch design. Oh, the yarn's going to go through the hole first. There we go. And now it's on the floor. But yeah, so this is the front I believe and this is the back and I I just have so many needles that I kept some on the needle instead of putting on waste yarn I kept it on the uh, yeah so hopefully it's long enough to actually make an armhole hmm I may have to make that a little longer 
but anyway beautiful very very easy to follow instruction and at the front here there is a slip stitch details that will be right there you can't really tell there's not enough knitted i haven't been knitting very much lately <laughs> too much in my life happening and and my fingers also anyhow life getting older having some kind of uh, issues with my hands but anyway yeah so can't wait to see what is uh, going to be coming out of that so i hope you've been well in the past couple of weeks i have and i'm really trying to keep um positive i'm the type of person that my cup is always half full instead of half empty and i see positive in everyone in every situation in everything so yeah this is this is it guys actually not quite <laughs> if you're going to be participating in the make along with sophie and i uh, just use the hashtag cozy for cozy middle knits cozy lv mal so it is a make along and i really 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 wanted to try to crush it a summer top if you are a person that likes to crochet and you have pattern suggestion that I could follow something really easy please write it down below and uh, maybe I'll add this one to my list and cast it on shortly also we'll have prizes um, I haven't decided on the prize yet but we have lots of time as the make along will end on June 21st so plenty of time to do more than one and every finished object will have an entry so i'm looking forward to see all of your project there is a revelry group that i've created um but i haven't been on it so to be honest i'm not going to be the best place for me to go on and check your project so please just post it in the social media i will go on at the end to see your project if you post on revelry and hopefully you'll get some great prizes so, so one more thing before i go i want to talk about this brand new len magazine book that is going to be released at the end of the month um, most of the store have started to receive it yet and we're not supposed to display it or show it around but i have a box of it here and the most exciting moment is that Nancy Wheeler from Knits It Happy as well as Marie-Christine Levaig from MCL Design both New Brunswick designers are in the book so I'm gonna show you the cover because there's no secret it's been out already and look at this oh my gosh volume 2 of 52 weeks of socks Len magazine it retails for $70 here at La Violette and I'm taking pre-order right now so we've already started selling them and I am thrilled it's an absolutely beautiful curated collection of socks and more I do socks more I like doing socks so I highly recommend that you get your hand on this beautiful book it will be available um, to pick up or ship at the end of the month so don't wait don't delay and grab your copy now so this is the time where i like to announce the two winners from all the comments and thank you so much for commenting i read them and i reply not in a fashion timely matter but i do at some points so i had <clears throat> two $25 gift card from La Violette to give away and the first winner was Lynn McDonald so I will send that over to you Lynn and our second winner was Lauren Macken Lashman so I did send you a message this morning early and I will send that to you shortly as well so congratulations and I think this is fun so why don't we do it again if you like to win a gift card please comment that's all you need to do comment why don't you comment oh yes yeah why don't you comment on your favorite summer knits 
and it can be anything from a tank top, sleeveless, cap sleeve, as long as it's something you can wear in the summer. And uh, I will draw two winner at the next episode or just before the next episode. So thank you so much for joining me today. And um, it was really, really nice to be able to share some of my knitting with you. I hope you're well, stay well, be kind, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.